Hello everyone and welcome to another Warcraft Rumble meta update video. Uh, before we get started, if you can hear some little noises, some pattering in the background, I apologise. It's just started to rain very heavily when I started recording this video, so my bad for that one, but let's get into it. You guys should know the drill by now. We are going to be going hero by hero and see what the best builds are and how rated builds are at the moment. Especially with the new meta, with the new tower, uh, it has shaken things up just a little bits let's take a look first off the um the usual suspect which is baron rivendare highest being fields he currently at five and a half thousands with tic tac air close on his heels so let's take a look what's going on with baron rivendare well here we go rivendare with the the kind of usual build here with all of the cheap tools so first off of course still the skeletal mages they did get a nerf in the patch but still very good Dark Iron Miner with the um, uh, with the Proximity Mine talent as well uh, to help on Arathi Basin with controlling that middle area, which is very, very important with the gold that you have access to, of course. There is Well Pegs, of course, with the Exploding Eggs that we're very, very used to seeing. Quillbore with the Bristle back for, again, some on-demand tanking and also kind of baiting out the tower as well with the Quillbore, especially with how slowly this tower attacks. Uh, we'll get to this in a second. Uh, Griffin Rider with Mighty Throw for that plus three range. And again, being cheap and very useful. And then Safe Pilot with coming in hot. And I do think this is needed because at least personally, I've seen some strategies that revolve around sappers. And coming in hot can really help versus those, even if your opponent tries to do some funky things with them to try and get them to go off. But I think the big one here, and is one we may well see uh, often, is one maybe not all of us can get. I don't have it yet, uh, which is Deep Breath with Double Dragon, which casts a second wave in the opposite direction. Uh, big line sort of damage spell uh, that you get for beating Anixia. So really big one here. I've seen more and more players talk about this one, and uh, I've been talking about how strong it is. So so we'll see if that's a theme that continues going on. But even with the patch, even with the slight nerf, Baron Rivendare still extremely powerful in PvP. So next up, we're going to have a look what Thalnos has been up to here. The highest rated is 4,000 from a Chemagon, Ch Chemangnon here. Yes, yeah, so let me just find Rivendare. Here we go. Uh, oh, kind of interesting actually, going for a, what appears to be a bit of a death ball style. Uh, so you're going to have Baron Rivendare with uh, Baron Rivendare, sorry, Blood Mage Thalnos with the uh, Drain Life. So the attacks have Life Steal, which can be pretty powerful. Uh, Abomination Tank here with Fresh Meat, uh, which after hooking a target, deal double damage on the next attack. So pretty powerful overall. Uh, we have Ghoul, um, even more tanky sort of stuff. Uh, and then we have Execute with Knock Enemies Away from the Cast Location to maybe give some room for Thalnos. We have Frostwolf Shaman with Earth Shield, which is kind of interesting because it has a bit of a double whammy here. Not only can it hit one of your tanks with Abomination or Ghoul, similar to what people are doing with General Drakasath, but also you can just hit Thalnos and make him even tankier. And then, of course, there's Arcane Blast that starts, um, uh, gains a level, sorry, after casting rank 4. And then um, Holy Nova as well, um, which is pretty interesting overall. I'm not sure if uh, effects are doubled on all elemental minis. I guess... Um, is Thalnos Elemental? I'm not sure about that, actually. But either way, a ton of spells being chucked out. Execute, we're probably going to see quite a lot of in this meta <clears throat> as well. So, interesting Thalnos list. I know it's one of the sort of less played heroes, but still uh, cool to see what people are doing with it. And now one of my favorite heroes, Ken Bloodhoof, here, uh, 5.4k rating. So, let's see what's going on here. Uh, it's Ken, wait, is that planes walking? Uh, it's planes running. Sorry, I always say planes walking. Uh, too much other games. Uh, planes running here, move fifty percent faster and gain the faster trait. So uh, Ken starts to uh, really leg it across the screen. Um, Warsong Raider here with Sunder Armor, damaging an armored enemy removes their armor. Kind of interesting because a lot of uh, minis are taking things that either give them armor or they gain armored uh, and there are just a lot of popular armored minis i think in this meta so interesting choice there chain lightning here um with the stun which again makes sense it's the one that pretty much everyone uses safe pilot with gnomish cloaking quill ball with the bristleback 
and then Murloc Tide Hunters with the shield. So going for the Murlocs there as maybe just some uh, defense or more defense against enemy ranged or any some of the bigger ranged units um, or enemy air units, I think I meant. Yeah, and then Griffin Rider to stack up here. So kind of interesting. I'll have to investigate what sort of damage. I've not really played with Warsong Raider at the moment in um, in this current map build. So we'll have to see how that one goes. So interesting there for Ken. Um, now we go to Cholga which is at 6k. This Chalga main, I think this is the person we, we saw last time. Someone who basically just only plays Chalga, it looks like, in PvP. So let's see what their current build is. Uh, so we have the Chalga with the uh, route two additional nearby targets, but deal half damage. So basically, instead of making Chalga cost one, which is the talent I've seen more often, this talent is to just say, I'll just stop any uh, sort of ground units from really doing much and then kill it with the rest. Uh, we do see the raptors on kill heal a, a small amount of damage so spamming out those raptors makes sense with chalga of course and it's a low cost unit and um, harpies with trinket collectors i really like because these can actually deal with dark iron dwarf in the middle whilst still mining so they still uh, feel very powerful even though increase the cost huntress it's huntress we know that's good this one's a surprise for me here flame waker um, which damages uh, with heat stroke, damaging enemies dazes them. Flame Waker, I think, is very powerful as a mini, but way more in PVE, so I'm surprised to see this. Uh, skeleton Party, summon five skeletal mages who guard the deployed location. Kind of interesting here as well. So you just use this to just dump them down and put things in the way of your opponent's pushes. This could be pretty powerful because, again, at least recently for me, you guys let me know what you've been seeing, but I haven't seen a lot of sort of death ball sort of things, sort of... Um, push towards towers uh, strategies i meant so it'll be interesting to see if, if this actually stops any sort of real real big pushes and then the abomination again with fresh meat so very yeah, much more higher curve chalga than we've seen in the past but again i think it's because this current setup of varathi basin in the tower um really lean towards just either bulkier or very fast minis um, to help out dodging those shots. So there's the, the Chalga main build for you. Um, next up, we have General Drakisath rocking a 5k rating here at the moment. So let's see what's being kicked out here. So we have General Drakisath with chromatic scales, of course. Grants near Bile is the resistant. We, we know this. We've seen this a lot. We have Firehammer with... Oh, this is, this is kind of strange. Okay, it's... I, I can't work out whether this is happened to be a PvE build, but there are certain things in here that makes me think otherwise, but we'll see. Uh, Fire Hammer upon reaching, uh, sorry, level up upon reaching full fury. There's the Drake with the damaging enemies burns them. Ogre Ma uh, Mage has uh, against the Frost. Griffin Rider with the potion, which levels up allies when it touches them. Uh, and then the Pyromancer with the Splash Area being doubled, and then Frost Wolf Shaman. So I think this is actually... I might I'm going to try and try this out if I can, but this is just all in on Dracosath winning the game, right? And saying all of this stuff will delete anything that tries to get close or counter Dracosath. I think like air units, for example, can be tricky. So all this is kind of built to deal with that. So very interesting Dracosath build there. We'll have to see how that pays off. Uh, next up, we have Grom Hellscream. Only 4.3k rating. He did, I believe, gain a health buff in the recent patch, but the problem with Grom is his ability overall isn't that strong, at least in my opinion, and him as a mini is decent but also not great. So he doesn't really stick out. Well, for example, like Baron has a super powerful leader ability uh, with summoning the skeletons, whereas Grom, it's like, oh yeah, a bit of bloodlust or whatever, fine. But we'll see how this one goes. So it's going to be Gromash with the mirror image, uh, so creating those two extra copies of himself vultures with uh seemingly no talent maybe that they just don't have one yet which is kind of funny uh chain lightning with reverberation which just allows you to cast it twice murloc tide hunters with the bubble yeah the huge griffin rider with range quillball with bristleback and the gnomish cloaking so kind of interesting here what is the plan is it to like grom vulture and just have loads of stuff and then have chain lightning defend i don't know you guys let me know if you see something here that i don't but it doesn't look overly convincing to me Next up, uh, ooh, very like 5k focused player here in Porcinet, uh, which is the Hogger coming on here. So let me do a quick scrolly down. Uh, okay, this looks a bit more usual. We see Hogger with uh, Ham Hawk 
again, 10% max health each time he's played. You want to cycle Ogre very quickly. We have the Quillbore with the Bristleback, the Murlocs again, the Griffin again, Huntress with Elven Might, Safe Pilot this time with Coming In Hot again. I do feel that Gnomish Engineering and Coming In Hot are very interchangeable. And then once again, Deep Breath with Double Dragon. I really need to get this. I need to stop being lazy, clear more PvE level stuff, and really get to um, Anixia, because I don't even have it unlocked yet, which is me being very lazy, so I apologize. But yeah, this, this looks cool. This Again, whenever uh, lesser seen heroes, at least for me, uh, do well, I'm always interested to see what the builds are. Uh, next up is, again, one of my favorite heroes, which is Jaina. Uh, is Tic Tac not higher on here? I knew Tic Tac played a load of Jaina, but maybe... Oh, there he is, 14, okay. Uh, 5.7k with this Jaina, so let's see uh, what they're doing here. So we have clear casting, so spells cost one less gold if played straight after Jaina. Um, we have the Harvest Golem, which I've been seen used quite a lot. This sort of Jaina Harvest Golem Defiance Bandit to fill the Alliance slots I've seen, um, which is on Death Stun enemies for three seconds. Very powerful. Bandits with Poison again, very powerful. Blizzard with the Cold Snap. This did get nerfed. It no longer stuns. I think you guys might have recalled if, if you've been watching my previous videos or my streams. I was shocked when I learned this stunned because reading it made me sound like it just stuck them in place. And now that's it, what it does. Um, deep Breath, Double Dragon again. Chain Lightning with Storm's Reach dramatically increases the jump distance. I'll be honest, I have seen zero people play with this. So this is kind of cool to see. And then the Gnomish. So a lot of this is sort of have that Harvest Golem, Bandit, and Jaina build up. And then just go with the spells. Because Jaina, especially with clear casting, with you know three cost Deep Breaths and, and one cost Chain Lightning, three cost Blizzard. These spells are so strong that... This is scary. If I had access to Deep Breath, I would jam this list right now. I'd stop the video. I'd just go and play it. Unfortunately, though, I don't. And next one is Maiev here, rocking at 5 point, more or less 8k fields he wants again. Uh, with the Maiev, let's have a look what's going on down here. Yet again, we're going to see Execute, but we have Maiev with a Remorseless deal, double damage for two seconds after killing an enemy, uh, which is really good because normally she kills stuff when she comes out of stealth and then she attacks and deals tons of damage. Uh, Griffin Rider with the range. Coming in hot, safe pilot, bursty flare, uh, well pegs, again, all this cheap uh, unbound stuff. Uh, execute with bloodlust, which is kind of interesting. The dark iron with the gold mine, and then the quill ball. So, again, kind of the usual stuff we see from Maiev, I would say, except for execute. Execute seems to be very, very favored uh, on this map, in this meta, with the towers, how they are right now. So, that's kind of cool to see. Uh, next up, we have old Murkai, uh, being led uh, by Jim. Yeah, fantastic name. So let's scroll down quick and have a little look. Uh, all Murkai here with, of course, Marathon of the Murlocs. The extra time being able to play those things to summon more Murlocs is very, very strong. We have the Bristleback Quillbore. The Murlocs, of course, with the Bubbles. We have Ghoul, which is something I've not seen too often, but with the Armoured, which is very strong again. Um, really, really powerful. Really awkward to deal with from a lot of builds. Dark Iron Dwarf with Goldmine. Coming in hot. And deep breath. Very interested to see now we see more and more people get hold of pretty much the hardest thing to get hold of in the game. How many more people are going to play it? I uh, jammed a lot of deep breath uh, when I was at BlizzCon because I was playing on their build, not my own account. So it is a fun spell to play with. So I do really have to work on that. Uh, next up, we have a Rend. Again, a hero I personally quite like. So let's see where he's up to now. Here he is. Uh, Rend again with Scale and Steel, kind of the go-to usual. The Dark Iron Dwarf with the Gold Mine, the Deep Breath with Double Dragon, Splody Eggs, Quill Ball, Safe Pilot with Coming in Hot, Defias Bandits with the Deadly Poison. So again, um, kind of surprising that there isn't too much sort of... Uh, it's not going like the all-in flying route that a lot of Rends do, but I think this is just saying... The rend is good enough to get like the cheap eggs, uh, and this should just be fine as a general go-to build because rend just by himself is very powerful, and it, against certain builds can be very very strong and awkward to deal with. Uh, next up, we have Sneed. This is where the uh, you know, one of the heroes where the the power really falls off. Um, Sneed, let me see what this build is. There it is. Uh, so it's Sneed with mine is money, friend. So gain the minor trait. I think this is the one most people go for. Very powerful. He mines very quickly as well. And then we have Warsong Raider again, but this time with Raising Focus becomes a siege unit. So what that means for those of you who may not know is 
this unit it acts like a gargoyle, right? Or um, an elemental, an earth elemental. Simply just ignores minis and just moves towards the nearest tower and then attacks it for a lot of damage. Um, Dark Spear Troll with Big Bad Voodoo. Not quite as strong now as he was in the Fire Breath Tower meta. Smoke Bomb. Affected minis move 50% faster until stealth with Through the Shadows. Until unstealth, sorry. This could be really powerful with not only Sneed, but Warsong Raider as well. And just get them to just run at a tower like super fast. That's kind of interesting. I've not really thought of that before. Now I want to try this. Griffin Rider with the range, Quillbot with the Bristleback, and then Holy Nova to give armor and resistance with Inner Fire. Very nice. So this feels like it's um, it's kind of like a, a, an all-in siege push, honestly, with Smoke Bomb to go for the Raider and, and a couple of these units and have the Holy Nova to just let them last that little bit longer. Super interesting build. Yeah, second to last now, Sylvanas, another of my favorite heroes here. Uh, let's see what people have been working with Sylvanas here. So we have Sylvanas with Black Arrow again. Just the best talent, honestly, at least in my opinion. And uh, Necromancer with Jeweled Skull. So summons Skeletal Mage instead of ske Skeletons. So gives you some more of that range. And then the Ghoul can tank with the Bone Shield, which again makes sense. Dark Spear Troll uh, with the Big Bad Voodoo. Dark Iron Miner, Safe Pilot with Quinn Hot. And you guessed it, guys. Deep breath. I did warn you earlier we'll be seeing more of this. This feels like the way I think you have to, or the only way I've really found to play Sylvanas is to try and make those kind of death balls or just high value plays. Uh, so seems to be working okay, and I'll have to give that build a try. And then finally, Tyrion at 5.3 point, eh, point and a half. Go with 5.3, it's fine. We can knock Tyrion down a little bit. Uh, so we have Tyrion with the Divine Shield, very powerful of course, the Defias Bandits with Deadly Poison, Holy Nova with the Inner Fire, Quillbore, Safe Pilot, and then, uh, very interestingly enough, Ogre Mage to put Burn on things, which is interesting. I'm surprised it wasn't like uh, Safe Pilot with the Coming In Hot and the Ogre Mage. And then um, Deep Breath with Attunement, Allies Caught in the Effect, Gain Resist. So... This is a very interesting. So the idea here being you can, instead of going for Footman, it's just Tyrion with Divine Shield. You've got Quillbore, of course. But then you have like this Ogre Mage for backup. Deep Breath to just throw on top. And then you've got like two levels of healing and resist giving, which can be very, very powerful again in this meta where other people are playing Deep Breath. So this will help out with that. So yeah, kind of just the usual go-to sort of tanky style, but with a little bit extra in there, which is kind of, kind of cool to see. So... Yeah, those are the current builds, guys. The current highest rated builds for each hero. Uh, again, I'll just quickly finish it off by going on this leaderboard. That's what we're looking at overall. Fields are currently um, looking at number one with Jaina, Maiev, Baron. Then we see Ch uh, Chalga, Jaina, Rend. Then Maiev, Baron, Jaina. Maiev, Chalga, Jaina. And so on. So you can see like... The meta's a little bit varied here. We've got an Uther up there as well. We've got Cairn up there. So not too bad overall, but let me know what you think of the builds that I've shown you guys today and what you think of the meta, of the map, of the towers, if you think any units are standing out. Also, let me know if you've got good tips for Anixia because I really need to get on and kill that one. But that's it for this meta update. Thanks a lot for watching as usual, and we'll see you guys next time.